All right. So, all right, thanks. So, uh, how are things going out over your way? Well, we have no cyclones, typhoons, bushfires, <laughs> a, a brief that's, reprieve. <laughs> that's, that's great. <laughs> that's good to hear. So, uh, with everything that's been going on across the globe, around the globe. All right. Well, let me um, go ahead and do our introduction here, and we can get things rolling. And as folks come on, uh, they'll be able to join right in. Uh, welcome, everyone, uh, tonight to the University of Acadia uh, Talk to You Call. And we have Franco Collins with us from Australia. Uh, tonight is the sixth day of April 2011. And uh, I want to welcome everyone. Glad you're here. Uh, remember to press star 8. Later on, we get to the question and answer session. If you're on the phone line, star 8 puts you in the question and answer queue. Also, just as a reminder, we're here for educational purposes only. Um, none of the uh, information given is for legal advice. And uh, we'd love to answer any of your questions the best manner we possibly can and share the information. So. Uh, with that, Frank, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you if you're ready. I am. Thank you so much, Jerry. Yes. Welcome everyone who is on the call listening live, and welcome to those that will be downloading the call later, either from TalkShoe or will be downloading from University of Ucadia.info. Let, let me start just by reading out the address for University of Ucadia. It's uh, university. Ucadia.info, and on the site you'll find not only are there forums, but also you should be able to download all the talk shoes that we have on a regular Wednesday. So welcome everybody on the call and, and those that will be listening later. There's been a huge amount of information, huge amount of information that has come through in the last week, and all of it is incredibly encouraging. So tonight I'm, I'm actually only, only have two key topics that I want to cover given that information to put it in perspective. The first is law, credibility and enforcement. Law, credibility and enforcement. And the second major area is money, truth and power. Money, truth and power. So I want to cover those areas and the updated information over the next hour and then leave the remaining time after that to be able to answer your questions. And as, as Terry said, please uh, go on and uh, if you want to talk live, go um, uh, star eight and let her know. Or if you want to post questions, put in all caps please the word question and then the nature of your question so we can keep track of those and, and then we'll, I will certainly seek to answer all your questions. Let's begin, though, with the first topic, law, credibility, enforcement. I know for anyone that has come on to Eucadia, has read about the ecclesiastical deed polls, has read the information. In fact, anyone that's coming to the site now, one of the biggest motivations to come is if you are facing some real and pressing issue in your life where you are effectively under attack by the system. That may be because your children have been taken or are threatened to have been taken or that your home is about to be taken or that someone has stolen property out of your bank account or the uh, department has decided to take money out of your account. Whatever the reason, you come most often not because everything's fine but really because you're looking for some help in desperate times and you come for specific answers. Now, not everyone is in that state, but I want to say that I'm very, very conscious of the importance for relevance, for a degree of certainty in the information, honesty in the information, and that as more information has come, it is easy to conceive that it is a moving feast 
in terms of this information. Well, that is that is not really a, a correct analogy if any feel that way. We have not repudiated the ecclesiastical deed process one inch. Any change that we have done from an original form to a new form is to strengthen, not to say that we have discovered any kind of fatal flaw that we need to correct. And what I want to cover in this first section of law, credibility and enforcement tonight is not only share with you the latest information, but see how this reinforces and strengthens and validates that now we have a clear understanding of a foundation of the law of their system so that we can build our knowledge competently, we can approach our learning confidently that whilst we may be confronted with people saying, I've never heard of this before, I don't know what you're talking about, you're barking up the wrong tree. In truth, we are absolutely 100% on accurate to the foundation and to the truth. And when we're faced with ignorance, we can deal with that. And I'll talk about that in a moment. But let me cover the big one that people face every time when they talk about this. Let, let's talk about enforcement first, and then we'll talk about the reaction a number of people still have in dealing with the system, and then we'll talk about the new information under law, credibility, enforcement. The first issue is enforcement. Now, I've said this a few times in the recent talk shows, but I'm going to put this up front because I want to deal with this up front, and that is the question of enforcement. Now, you'll hear from people, they'll say, how many people have actually been helped by this? How many people have had the full process succeed? How many people have seen enforcement? Well, I'll answer that right up front. All the military forces in the world cannot defeat a spiritual army. And we repeat that. All military forces in the world cannot defeat a spiritual army. And the system we're dealing with is a kingdom of ideas that has been implemented. When the Jesuits took control in the 16th century and reconstituted a model of the world and created provinces under the Roman concept of occupation across the world, their idea was that a spiritual army had conquered the world and that their missions and posts were really posts of occupation. This is a spiritual and a conceptual idea. First, and a temporal implemented idea second. And it is why no one has defeated their system. No one. Because all the military forces in the world cannot defeat a spiritual army. So whilst it may appear that guns, tasers, prisons, torture, and all the other tools available to the present bridge trolls is very real, and real power, in actual fact it's not. The power is the power of the idea and in particular when the idea is aligned perfectly and connected perfectly to the spirit. When we talk about the importance of what we're doing, we are talking about the fact that when you issue your ecclesiastical deed poll and you state for the record, we, the divine immortal spirit, that you finally realize and stand up and say, I'm immortal. My mind is immortal. And no one stands between me and the divine. Then that is an unbreakable bond. And from that point, things will change. But that is, the, that is the, the key. That is the strength of this idea. No one, not Franco Collins, not a Pope, not a guru, not a bishop, stands between you and the divine. I am a man. And no one stands between you and the divine. That is the power of an idea whose time has come. Now, Moving on to dealing with these people, I know 
that in, at the sharp end of this process and I, I'm grateful, enormously grateful that many have come to this in, in good faith, have read the material, have gone to court, gone to friends and had the reaction, oh, this is crazy, you don't know what you're talking about. There's no ecclesiastical law in the courts. It's all statute, citation. have no idea. This is all madness. It's all nonsense. It's all gobbledygook. That it's said with such confidence, with such arrogance that there's a certain doubt. Well, let's 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 be clear now with the with the enemy and the aspect that we're dealing with when we're dealing with these people. Now, as a model, if we make something wrong, we seek to correct it. And I'm the first here to admit that I have been wrong where I have said and described the enemy in terms of history, words like Khazar or Venetian or even sometimes the word parasite because those labels start to label people based on culture and history and I've had great difficulty in trying to express to you the nature of a very small group of people that have presented themselves as the problem, the, the ruling elite. But now we have a description and you'll hear this more and more often now because I believe it most adequately describes the true enemy. The enemy that we deal with is not the flesh. The enemy we deal with is a bad idea and the idea we call it the philosophy of fraudism. F-R-A-U-D-I-S uh, fraudism, I-S-M. And why we call it fraudism is that it is a philosophy of creating an entirely fictitious world. It is a philosophy of creating a world of lies. It is a philosophy that justifies lying and not telling the truth. And now it is a philosophy where people in power actually believe their own lies. Now once the people in power start to believe their own lies, we are dealing with a severe mental illness, and that is fraudism. Now, a number begged me to change it from fraudism to stupidism, <laughs> and I'm sure a number of you who are listening tonight and a number who will listen later on would say stupidism is probably more apt when we're dealing with the kind of mindset in these courts where they have no idea of the history. They absolutely, these lawyers and attorneys, these prosecutors, and especially as judges, have no idea of the law. They don't care. If you said to them, 1533, the Ecclesiastical Licensing Act of King Henry VIII, as a, as a pioneering instrument in defining the, offer, the concept of an office, they'd look at you blankly and go, sure. They sit in the robes and they know no reason for them. They bang the gavel and they could as well be monkeys. But stupidism, as much as it is apt for a number of these people, doesn't really define the nature. The nature is fraudism. We are dealing with a system that is entirely and wholly based on lies and it is an ideology. It is a mental illness and that is what we are dealing with. Not people not based on, on religion, creed, colour, race. And whenever we go down that path, of course, we run the risk of involving good people and bad. People who are born into a family, if their parents have been involved in terrible atrocities, doesn't mean that the children themselves are blackened. That is a, a bias that we must be careful. So you'll hear more and more that the description we're dealing with, when we're dealing with the elite, is... Fraudism. And when people are infected with fraudism, we will call that the parasite mind. Well, the veil is lifting. And let's talk about some of the knowledge that's coming through with law, credibility, and enforcement that reinforces the strength and the bedrock of proceeding with ecclesiastical deed. Well, I'm going to start with one of the important insights, practical insights for all of, all of you on the call that reinforces the letter on the Office of Executor 
if you go 